Hi, my name is Ines, and I'm a doctoral student in the group Seismology and Wave Physics at ETH Zurich. In this video, I want to talk about some work that I collaborated on with my colleagues, Christian Böhm, Andrea Zonino, and Andreas Fichtner, titled Analyzing Resolution and Model Uncertainties for Ultrasound Computer Tomography Using Hashian Information. The main goal of this work is to assess and compare the resolution quality of tomographic models obtained with different tomographic methods. Specifically, I will focus on two methods. The first one being straight rate tomography, where one only considers the first arriving pulses. And the second is full waveform inversion, where the entire signal is taken into account, including the later arrivals that encode scattering effects. Straight rate tomography is a linear problem, whereas full waveform tomography is nonlinear, and we will see that this has specific implications for the resolution analysis. To get a visual idea of what happens in an inversion, let us examine a linear case. Our objective when solving an inverse problem is to minimize the misfit between observed and synthetic data. For linear problems, the misfit is quadratic as seen here, and we then try to iteratively slide down from the prior model M to the optimal model M tilde, which reproduces the data within the uncertainties. Since the misfit is quadratic for linear problems, the second order expansion around the optimal model, which involves the matrix of second order derivatives, termed the Hessian, is exact. The Hessian describes the geometry of the misfit in terms of its curvature, and tells us by how much the misfit changes if the model is perturbed. Each row and column of the Hessian represents how sensitive an individual measurement is to changes in the model parameters. With this, the Hessian can be interpreted as the most direct measure of resolution in pixel and trade-offs in model space, and it will be the central piece of the following analysis. The beauty of linear problems is now that the straight ray tracing matrix F together with the prior covariance matrices that encode a priori uncertainties, can be used to obtain an analytical formulation of the Hessian. The big question is now, can we use the same framework to analyze the resolution in a full waveform tomography? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Since full waveform inversion is nonlinear in the model parameters, the misfit is not quadratic anymore and may look, for instance, more like this. A consequence of this non-quadratic misfit is that there exists no analytic formulation for the Hessian and therefore an analytical assessment of model uncertainties is generally not possible. The key point that will allow us to extend the linear resolution framework to nonlinear problems is to linearize the inverse problem under the assumption of Gaussian uncertainties. In the vicinity of the optimal model M tilde, shown here by this blue circle, the misfit can then still be approximated quadratically. Taking the gradient of the misfit at a perturbed model, we can see that this is actually equal to the Hessian applied to a point localized perturbation delta M. Hence, we can use gradient information to model the Hesse vector product with respect to a perturbed model vector delta M which will produce an estimation of the spread of the point perturbation. Now let's see how we can use the resolution information in the Hessian in a practical case. Here, we consider a 2D numerical model of a cross-sectional slice through a breast, and you can see that the tissue structure consists of different regions with different slowness values attached to them. For starters, we consider a simplistic transducer array with one source and a set of 20 receivers on the opposite side of the model. We start with the linear straight wave formulation, and here you can see a row of the Hessian mapped to pixel space, visualizing that for transmission data in the infinite frequency approximation, travel times are only sensitive to changes in the model parameters along the geometrical ray path corresponding to the specific measurement. On the right side, you can see now the result of the Hesse vector product for a point localized perturbation in the middle of the domain. In contrast to the straight ray example, the sensitivities extend away from the ray paths when finite frequency effects are accounted for by the modeling theory. 
As a final step, let's actually look at a realistic setup with many sources and receivers all around the model. In order to obtain a proxy for the model-wide resolution quality, a very common procedure is to perturb the model not only at one location, but in the entire domain by a checkerboard pattern with negative and positive perturbations, which you can see in a qualitative fashion here. If the reconstruction is able to reproduce the pattern of the checkerboard, perturbations on the order of the width of the individual squares are well resolved. In a full waveform inversion, one needs to choose a misfit functional, and then there are many forms to choose from. Most commonly, the L2 difference between the observed and the synthetic waveforms is chosen, which takes into account the entire signals. However, if we want to compare the resolution benefit obtained by using a more sophisticated physical model to describe wave propagation, we should use the same data that is used in a straight rate tomography, namely only the first arriving pulses. This is what the cross-correlation misfit provides us with, and you can see in the upper plot that when we only consider the first arrivals, the checkerboard pattern is not well resolved. Individual features are smeared along the source receiver line in contrast to the result obtained with an L2 misfit where the structure is well recovered. Decreasing the size of the checkerboard pattern makes the reconstruction of individual features harder, and indeed, we observe that the resolution in case of a cross-correlation misfit completely breaks down, in contrast to the L2 result where even the small pattern is still recovered. The main takeaway of this work is that the Hashen provides an easily accessible measure of those resolution lengths for linear and nonlinear problems alike. Using the same data and discretization, this allows us to compare differences in the resolution quality of tomographic models originating within the specific formulation of the forward operator directly. If you are more interested, you can find an in-depth explanation in the article linked in the description box. Thank you for watching.